Hey everyone, good morning and welcome to another reading vlog. We're in January now, happy new year, happy 2023. And I'm just sitting, trying to relax for a few minutes before I sign on to work. And um, just wanna give you an update on what I'm gonna be reading this month, what I'm gonna be finishing up, and kind of hopefully what my plan is. So in my previous vlog, I was telling you guys I was reading The Iron Duke, which is part of a, a little series. I think there's four books in it and then maybe a novella or two. And it's written by Mel Jean Brooke. And it's like a steampunk sci-fi slash romance. And it was it was really good. I finished that yesterday. And um, it was okay, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I definitely have some thoughts about this. First of all, the world building was incredible. Um, the descriptions and the writing was great. I really enjoyed all of that. Um, it was very cinematic. Like I could picture this being made into a TV series or a movie, just, um, the world she created this world back 200 years ago, but filled with steam engines and airships and there's zombies and there's Megalon sharks and there's just, there's Krakens and you know, there's just so many cool elements to this world that she created. The romance between the two characters was interesting. The The main guy character, the Iron Duke, he was extremely alpha male, which I don't care for too much in my romance books. I mean, he did, he did develop like a softer side to him and a few more redeeming qualities, but he was very pushy. Um, he forced himself on her a couple times within the book. And I just, I didn't really like that. Um, you know, I don't know if some authors write that thinking that it's erotic and that women are going to like that kind of scene, but I, I don't really appreciate it. I mean, I just finished The Wall of Winnipeg by Mariana Zapata and that was such a contra contrasting relationship that it's maybe that's why I was like turned off by that. But I did have some issues with um, that. Not, not, I wouldn't say trigger warning, but he, I don't know. I just couldn't fully connect with the romance of the story. The plot and the adventure was good, but I felt like some of the things resolved really easily. It was really weird. I don't know. I guess I'll have to put my thoughts together for my wrap up at the end of the month. But so I finished The Iron Duke and I have a couple more books that I am trying to finish. For the first part of the year, I really want to focus on finishing up some books I've started and finishing up some series that I've been kind of like dragging on. So for now, I think I'm going to try to finish this book, which is what I, one that I started over the summer called Summer in the City by Robin Sisman. And this is kind of like, I guess this would be chick lit if you had to categorize it. Chick lit slash romance, more chick lit. And it's actually really cute. I'm, I'm probably like three fourths of the way through, but it, it follows this woman named Susie or Suze and this guy named Lloyd, and they work uh, for basically the same company, but Suze lives in London and Lloyd lives in New York City. So their job decides to participate in a job exchange. So they switch places. Suze goes to New York City to stay in his apartment, and Lloyd and his fiance Betty go to London to stay in Suze's apartment. So they're really different personality. They have really different personalities. Lloyd is really down to earth and practical and creative. Suze is very sort of wild, flies by the seat of her pants. Like she's just like really funny. Um, I really like the character that she portrays. I really like her character and her personality. The writing's really fun. There's um, lots of points of humor throughout the book. They're very likable characters. And there's kind of a conspiracy that happens where the people in New York City are trying to get rid of Lloyd. And I think Susanna unwilling, un unknowingly becomes a part of that plot. So once she realizes what's going on, she's like, oh my gosh, I have to help Lloyd, this poor guy. So they start communicating. They don't really communicate until halfway through the book, but we follow them and their adventures in these different cities. And it's their first time, both of them in these cities. So of course, there's a little bit of a love triangle going on. You know, typical, like Lloyd's fiance is not the perfect person for him. You know, we, we all know where this is going, but it's been just a really fun, light read and I've been really enjoying it. So I'm gonna try to finish that. I'm about, I'm about that much left. One of my other goals is to try to finish books that I've borrowed from people so I can return them. And one of them is, I. so I'm a huge Star Wars fan and I've been watching the movies in order 
I think I'm getting ready to maybe do Rogue One. I think that's where I'm at in the storyline. I've seen all of them, but my brother is a huge Star Wars fan too, and he collects books. So I wanted to try to read some of the backlit, some of the backlisted books, and try to read along with the movies that I'm watching. I mean, it's going to take me forever, but the first one on that list is the Star Wars High Republic. Those this goes way back in the history of Star Wars, back to before the movies began. So this one is called. Light of the Jedi by Charles Sewell, Sewell. and um, I'm just going to try it and see if I like it. I have three, I have two more books, <laughs> whoa, I have two more books um, in this series. I think there's maybe five or six total, so I'm going to give this a whirl um, so I can give these back to my brother. Hopefully it should be fairly easy to read and not too complex. I think I've only really read one other Star Wars novel before that was centered on Princess Leia. I do like I do like those novels a lot. I'm a huge Princess Leia fan. And the third book I have on my Kindle, which I got for Christmas, and I love it so much. I got the Kindle Paperwhite, but I have the Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. So I'm doing a book club with um, some YouTubers. There's Caroline Reads and Emmy, some of my favorite booktube people. I'm sure you guys probably know them. But she is doing a they're sort of a classics game of tones readathon, and the first book for January is going to be Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. And I've only read one other Ernest Hemingway book, and that was The Sun Also Rises, which I really loved. So hopefully, I'll enjoy this. Um, another one of my reading goals this month is to or this year is to try to read more classics. Ideally, I would love to read one classic a month. Um, and I'm also still trying to do that greatest novels of all time challenge, which isn't really a challenge, but I just want to read off of that list. And so reading Clarissa, which I started last year, it's a really long, dense epistolary novel um, that I started and I really want to finish that. That is number 100 on the list, so I can't move forward until I get through with that. And then I also started reading from that list, the Bible. So I'm about little over 75% done with that. That's a huge goal for me to finish that. I'll probably try to work on the Bible first and then Clarissa. Um, another reading goal I have is to read one nonfiction book a month. I'm not sure if I'll stick with that, um, but hopefully I can. I do love nonfiction as well. And then the fourth book that is on my TBR for this month is an audiobook called The Reading List. And this is part of my other book club I'm in, which is through my alumni college, university. And that book is, is um, I don't know anything at all about it. I'm just going to jump in blindly. I'll probably start that today on audio. And yeah, I think that's it for now. I just wanted to check in with you guys and share some of my TBR and my goals. And we'll see how the month goes. morning. Hi, I'm just out on a walk before work and I wanted to just pop on really quick and give you a quick update on Farewell to Arms, which I started. And as I was thinking about this, I think this is one of the first classics I've read in over 20 years, definitely. I think the last classic I read was Jane Eyre back in my early 20s, so it's been a while. But I am surprised by this book so far. I'm surprised by how much I'm liking it. Um, I guess if there's one word right now, how I would describe it, it would be cozy. I'm about one quarter of the way through already. And, um, I'm also surprised by how easy it is to read. It's really, really approachable as a classics novel, especially if you haven't read any in a while. And, oh, I totally forgot. I am reading Clarissa, which is another classic. I started that last year, so scratch that. Okay guys, I just wanted to update you. 
So I started a new audiobook that I wanted to just let you guys know. It's called The Reading List. I can't remember the author's name, Sarah Nisha something. So this is a general fiction book and it tells the story of, it follows two different characters. One is this girl named Alicia and the other is an older man, I think in his 70s, named Mukesh. At the beginning of the book, they don't know each other and we keep flipping back and forth to each character's sort of separate story. And the audiobook is great because it is a multiple narrator audiobook. So we have somebody narrating Mukesh, Mukesh's story and we have someone narrating Alicia's story. So we follow Alicia and her brother Aiden. Aiden is, um, Aiden used to work at their public library and he absolutely adores the library. The book opens up with him there enjoying the peace and quiet and solitude of the library itself. And then we switch over to Alicia who gets a job there you know, she's not a reader. She's not into it at all. She's not really like a huge people person. And we find out that they're taking care of their mother, Layla. Layla has some mental health issues going on that we're not fully aware of, but we know that she's really struggling. And the two kids who are, you know, young adults, they are really struggling to care for her full time and they really don't have a lot of support. And then we follow Mukesh, who is this man in his 70s. He's a widower. He lost his wife of like 50 years and they have three daughters together and one granddaughter named Priya. Um, and Mukesh's wife, Nana, was a huge reader. She used to go to the library all the time and take out books and she loved to read. And Mukesh never was really on that wavelength, but Nana and her granddaughter Priya shared a love of reading together. So they all miss her so, so much. And Mukesh finds a book that in all of the, the stuff, he finds this random library book and he decides to read it because he feels closer to Nana and he absolutely adores the book. The book is called The Time Traveler's Wife, which is a hugely popular book. I personally never read it, but it sound it always sounded really good. But he reads this book and he was like, oh my gosh, what a what an amazing story. He really connects with it. He feels close to her. So he decides that he wants to take the book back to the library and return it after all these years. He's never been to the library before. So he shows up at the library where Alicia's working and he kind of asks for help. He's like, I really enjoyed this book. Um, can you help me find another book? And she's just distracted. She's kind of rude to him. She doesn't help him at all. Um, and he kind of leaves in an anger, in anger. Alicia then happens to pick up this book called To Kill a Mockingbird, which is given to her on the recommendation of another patron who kind of saw the interaction happen between Alicia and Mokesh. And he's like, you should give, tell him to read this book. This is a classic. Everyone would enjoy it, but it's too late. She kind of scares Mukesh away and he's gone. So she's left with To Kill a Mockingbird. Inside the book, she finds this list of books um, eight different books. And it's the top of the list. It says, just in case you need this. So the books are a mix of some classics and some children's classics and some modern, more modern fiction. So she kind of just, she throws the list away, you know, couldn't care less, but then she happens to pick it back up and she kind of holds on to it. So what the book talks about though, is her eventually going through this list of books and reading them. And I think that's what makes this book so appealing to me is it's kind of like a book about books, which I really enjoy. Um, and I know it's going to be extremely heartwarming. I know I'm already in love with Mukesh, this older Indian man, Alicia, you know, we just, your heart breaks at the struggle that her and her brother are having, trying to care for their mother that has these mental health problems, which aren't fully disclosed. We don't know what it is, but it's not easy. Um, and I just feel like they're going to come together because of this reading list. They're going to bond over these books. And I just, I'm really excited to see that unfold. I think it's such an interesting premise. It has really good ratings on Goodreads and Amazon. So I'm excited to keep going with that. I am already interested in it enough that I have to find times to listen to it where I'm not too distracted. Like I really want to catch and listen to every word of this. So that's what I'm currently reading. I also started A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway, which is part of this YouTube book club that I'm in as well. So that one is really interesting. I've only read one other Ernest Hemingway before, which is The Sun Also Rises, which I really enjoyed. And um, 
This one so far is very classics-y, if you know what I mean. It's written in that literary fiction, kind of a stream of consciousness a little bit. Um, the novel starts out with him describing the scenery, but then he keeps talking about the troops that are mar marching through. So he, he starts describing the beauty of the landscape, and then we cut to like the troops marching through and these sort of like daily observances of a war going on in that area. So we find out he is in the war. I can't tell yet what role he has. His friend is a surgeon, so I don't know if, if he's on the medical team or not. There's not a whole lot of detail yet, but the, the writing's like pretty easy to read, which I was glad about. Um, right off the bat, I'm like noticing that the sentences are really long, the punctuation looks like it's missing, but I know that's just kind of a telltale style of these older classics. So I don't know if I'm going to do a separate, no, I'm not going to do a separate reading log for it, but it's keeping my attention enough and I'm enjoying it. So just wanted to give you a heads up on what I started reading now. And it's about the first week in January. So we'll see how far I get with them. I just want to show you this book my sister got me today. It was so incredibly thoughtful of her. She knows that um, for the past like five or six month or months or so, I've been really struggling with my job. Um, it's gotten very stressful. They kind of switched us a bunch of us around and restructured some of the teams that we were on for work. And I'm now doing something that I just don't really enjoy. It's, it's very uncomfortable for me and it's very negative and energy draining. But she saw this book. I don't know where she was, but she saw this book in one of the bookstores she was in and she thought of me. But And she part got it for me just as a little, little like comforting gift and telling me to hang in there and everything. But it's called An Immense World by Ed Young. And it's how animal senses reveal the hidden realms around us. And this is like so up my alley. I can't even tell you guys. I love reading anything about um, the spiritual world and different realities and quantum physics and all that stuff. And this is a take on how animals can sense the different things going on in our world. So I am so excited. It's a thick one, um, nonfiction, but... This is definitely something that I want to dive into sooner rather than later. It just looks so interesting to me. So have you, any of you guys heard of this? Would you read anything like this? I mean, I definitely would. Here's our other Christmas tree. This is a fake one, but I'll probably keep this up for a while, like a really long time. I can't help it. <laughs> All right, so I was giving you an update on Farewell to Arms yesterday and I realized afterwards that I forgot to hit record for the second part. So I'm gonna break that down again. It's raining out today. It's a little unseasonably warm for us for the last couple days. So all that beautiful snow we had is pretty much gone. <laughs> it's um, just a rainy, but feels warm to me. It's like 50 degrees out. So just taking a quick walk before work. So Farewell to Arms, yeah. So. I'm really enjoying this book so far. I'm probably about 30% of the way through. This one I'm actually reading, not listening to. And I like how the story is unfolding. Um, like I mentioned, I don't know if I got this part before, but the vocabulary and the written part is really easy to understand. It's a very approachable classic. I feel like my 10 year old could read this and understand the words. She might not understand the adult theming part of it but she could get through it if she had to so that's cool um, and I'm also surprised at how much I'm enjoying it it's a very cozy it feels cozy um, 
it takes place during World War I, but it's very um, simplified and there's not a lot of angst. And we're following this man named Frederick Henry, Henry who's a lieutenant in the Italian Ambulance Corps in, the, in their army. So there's a lot of mystery. We don't even find out what his actual name is until like one quarter of the way through the book. He's young. We don't know why he's in Italy or why he joined the Italian army as opposed to the American army because he is an American. Um, and he meets and falls in love with this nurse named Catherine Barkley, who he calls her Catherine Barkley by her full name throughout the whole, throughout the story so far, which is really cute. And they fall in love and he gets wounded in um, just a random strike when they're eating dinner. Um, a bombshell falls on them and one of his friends dies and he gets injured. He has this long recovery, he has to have surgery. And it just kind of talks about their relationship and his little daily things that he does. And it's really, what I like is that it's, it feels so innocent, I guess you could say. Um, it's just like, he doesn't focus on the negative parts of the war or the sadness or anything like that. But he really like thinks about the simple pleasures, like having his bottle of vermouth and having his newspapers to read and just enjoying this time. It's kind of secret time with this nurse, Catherine, and their relationship is really sweet. And it's just like, I don't know. I really, I like it a lot. I'm really enjoying it. I just like how the author uses these contrasting imagery. So they'll talk, he'll talk about the beautiful landscape and the rolling hills and the, the streams with the pebbles. And then he'll insert a sentence like the troops are marching by. So he's like, inserting the beautiful landscape in amongst this war. So I really like that part about it. Um, I just, I don't really know anything about this book. I didn't do any research about it beforehand. So I'm really just reading it and sharing my thoughts as I go. But I just am happy to be reading such a famous classic and I'm really hoping to read more classics this year. And some of the other characters are really interesting. The characters are easy to follow because there's not a ton of them. So we have Ronaldo or Ronaldi, who's his BFF, and he's an Italian surgeon within the army. And he's just funny. He calls him baby and he's affectionate. And it's just a really cute friendship that they have between each other. So I'm just looking forward to seeing where the story goes and what the plot happens, what happens with the plot and what happens with their relationship. So yeah, I'm enjoying that so far. I'm out here on a walk in the woods just for fun and I'm listening to the reading list and I just wanted to pop on and share a couple of quick thoughts about it. So I'm really, really loving this book so far. It's it's different from anything I've ever read. It's There's not a huge amount of plot going on, but the characters and the character development and the personalities and the stories of these two main people we're following are so interesting. It's just like... There's something so satisfying about reading a book about books because if you've read the book that they're talking about, you can really relate to that and it's interesting to see how it affects someone differently. And then if you haven't read the books yet, it just inspires you and it makes you want to read them. So 
the reading list, um, like I mentioned, is about these two different, well, is about this 17 year old girl named Alicia who finds a reading list inside of a book that was returned to her. And um, it just, on the top, it says, just in case you need it. And it lists eight different books. So we're probably through about the fourth book that she's read. And it's just, now I want to read all of them. I've read a couple of them on the list, but only a few. And it's, just hearing how each book is bringing her closer to the people in her life and really changing things. She's in a really stressful situation with her family life and just to see how these books provide an escape for her and provide insight and helps her change her way of thinking and helps her bond with some of the people in her life that she really needs help with. It's so heartwarming. And then Mukesh's story, it's really interesting how he perceives the book in a totally different way um, for example, they both are reading the book Rebecca and Alicia, the 17 year old is scared to death of this book, but Mukesh is looking at it through the lens of grief in losing his own wife and through the guilt of possibly forming another female friendship and how, you know, he's so, um, set in his ways about not marrying ever again. And just to see him struggling with this guilt and this trying to process feelings of wanting to have friendships, you know, that might be female. So I am, I'm loving this book. It has a lot of similarities to me for All the Lonely People by Mike Gale, which is my favorite book of last year. And I know this is going to be a favorite for 2023. I'm really loving it. I bought the physical copy. I'm just waiting for that to show up, but the audio is amazing. So I'm really enjoying it. I hope you guys check it out if it sounds like it's something interesting. I just wanted to pop on. It's pretty late. I'm getting ready to head to bed soon, but I just want to give you a quick reading update. I am almost done with both of the books I've been talking about in this vlog, which is A Farewell to Arms by M. Ernest Hemingway, as well as The Reading List by Sarah Nisha Adams. So for Farewell to Arms, I only have one chapter left. So I think I'm going to finish this tonight. And then for the reading list. I'm doing this one as an audiobook, and I have about an hour left to listen to for this one. So both books I have really, really enjoyed this month, and I feel like I'm kind of dragging out the ending because I've been enjoying them so much. I want to just make sure that I'm fully present and I'm in a space where I can concentrate and enjoy the end of these books. So I'm going to do that, and I will um, just film my final thoughts when I finish those and that'll be probably it for this vlog. Um, so it's been a good month. It's been a good month. It's snowing out right now. It's just a winter wonderland out there. The girls went to bed hoping and praying that they would have a snow day tomorrow. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys are having a good reading month as well. <music> to more beautiful snow today. It's so pretty. Ugh. I didn't get a chance to finish A Farewell to Arms last night. I was too tired. 
and I just wanted to wait until the morning to finish it up. And unfortunately now I have to go to work, so I'm gonna have to wait probably for the rest of the day to finish both of my books, but it'll be okay. Hopefully the day will go by fast. The kids have a snow day. So that's always fun working from home when everybody's here, but I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> Okay, so I just right now finished a farewell to arms and I am, <laughs> I'm speechless. Like I cannot believe what I just read. <laughs> I can't believe that was the ending. Um, I don't want to say anything because I don't want to spoil it for anyone. But if you have read this book, um, wow. I just, I have no words. I have no words. I know on my Kindle edition, there is some alternative endings and I'm really going to need to put my thoughts together for my wrap up, but wow. Wow. I don't even know what to say. Oh my God. So I think I'm just going to sit with that for a few minutes and then I have a few minutes left on my audiobook for the reading list and I did that on purpose because I wanted to end on that book for the night as opposed to this book that I just read. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to document my real-time thoughts on finishing A Farewell to Arms. <sighs> okay. <laughs> you guys I just finished the reading list and it was so good it was so uh, I don't know it was so heartwarming I really really enjoyed it um, it just left me with such a nice feeling it had such a beautiful ending such a contrast from last night's finish of a farewell to arms but I've had a whole day to think about that book and I'll share my thoughts with that in my wrap up but I think I may even actually do a separate video just about the ending of that book. So, but the, the reading list was just, it was just filled with like serendipity and fate. And uh, I, I am like trash for that topic and for those type of books. So I really enjoyed it. I'll have more to say, um, in my wrap up, but I think for now I'm going to end the vlog and I'm going to start editing this so I can post it soon. But thank you guys so much for watching and joining me on this icy, cold, wintry vlog with heartwarming stories. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.